In this video, we're going to turn this CSV file, which is some kind of booking data, and we want to turn it into this paper we can print out and cut out the tickets. To do this, we're going to use a very nice alternative to LaTeX called Typest. Here's the document, it's live previewing, and the first step is to load in the CSV file as data. And we can do that using the CSV function, and if we just want to debug and see that it actually works, we can just try to print it out, and it will actually be rendered to the paper in an ugly debug way. But it's nice to just see that we have the results here. So it has loaded in the CSV as just an array of arrays, where the first array is the headers, and the rest of the arrays are just the data rows. To make this layout happen, I think the best idea is to use the grid function. And in the grid function, you can just define how many columns you want, and then you just give all the grid cells as arguments. I want to have two columns that take up as much space as possible, so we can do it like this. So now these two columns take up a full fraction, they split the remaining space evenly. Now if we look at what the bookings variable contains, it actually contains the first row here, which is the actual header, so we actually don't want that. So we can slice it away by dot doing dot slice one. The next step is to actually turn this structured data into some type of content instead. We can do that using the dot map method to transform every element in some way. And you give it a function here, so for every row, we should maybe pick out the name. Now we've got the first element of every row, but it's kind of ugly to have to index every row like this. So instead we can actually unpack each row, because we know what each row contains. By writing it like this, we unpack each row and give names to each element, so it's much easier to work with. Now the next step is to actually combine these two concepts and create a grid cell per name, for example. So if we try to just place what we wrote before in here, it's not going to work, because every grid cell needs to be of type content, but now we have given it a full array. So what we actually need to do is to spread that array and place the elements one by one into the grid function. And we do that by doing that spread operator with dot dot. Now we're getting somewhere. Looking back at the final output, what we want is the name to be centered, and we want every VIP ticket to have a golden background and some other stuff in the corners. And we also want every cell to take up as much height as possible. And actually there's no margin on this page. First things first, maybe let's remove the margin from the page. And every row should take up as much space as possible. Let's place every name in the center of each grid cell. Instead of just returning the name from this map function, we can actually do a complex thing. We can do an align of center plus horizon of the name. To change the background of the grid cell, it will be easier if we return a grid cell here instead of just plain content, because then we can actually give the grid cell the parameter fill. Now this makes every cell yellow, so we need to actually make this conditional, because it should depend on if the ticket is VIP. Now, because this is a CSV file, the isVIP is actually a string, so we actually want to parse that into a real boolean. We can just shadow the variable by binding a new variable, testing if isVIP is true. Now the field can be conditional. If it is VIP, then we return yellow. Otherwise it would implicitly return none. Now how do we place all these corner things? We can do that using the place function, it just puts stuff but doesn't actually reflow or cause any content to shift. So it's quite handy here. In the top left we have a common thing, it just says ticket, but the top right is conditional, so it's only if it is VIP that we should put VIP. Another common element is this seal icon that's down there. And typed actually has like all the emojis in this nice module syntax. So we can just find the seal and use it. Oh wait, it's bottom left. And now finally we have the seat number. Now we're not quite there yet, because the contents of each cell are packed against the edges, so we should add some padding by using the inset argument on the grid. Maybe one font unit? And I see now that the name was also bold. So we could do that by using the strong and keep it all in the script syntax, or we could use the markup mode and use the asterisk like this. So I think just three things left. My yellow is too saturated, so we can actually desaturate it by using yellow dot desaturate with a percentage. And the font is different, so I will change that. And finally, there's some borders between each ticket. And we can add that to all the cells by just defining stroke and the thickness. In the final example, Taylor has the first ticket here, but in my example, Alex has the first ticket. 
we haven't sorted them in the same way. If you look at the original data, we can see that the reason Alex is the first in our example is that he is the first occurrence in the file. But the reason that Taylor is first in this example is because it has been sorted by ascending booking time. So we want to do that too. We can do that here in the step where we load all the bookings in using the sorted method. And if you use the key parameter of the sorted, you can give it a similar syntax to map where you unpack each row and sort everything by a specific column. So yeah, that's it. Hope it's useful to you.